You've all got one of these, right? I assume, yes, a metronome like this one here. This is a small Korg metronome that I bought 20 years ago when I first moved to France. I was about like 10 or 11 at the time or whatever. And it costs next to nothing and it sounds like this. And this is an amazing piece of engineering. I don't know how many times in the last 20 years this has fallen to the floor and smashed into loads of little pieces. I've had to pick it up, put the batteries back in, put it all back together, put the back cover on. And every time I turn it on, it still works. I don't know how they do it, but they do. It's fantastic. And you can hear it has a slightly different sounding click on the one, a slightly higher pitch sound, which gives you the one of each bar. There it is, on the one every time, that's slightly different sounding click. But today we're going to be needing a metronome that is more programmable than this one, than this one can do. So I'm going to be programming the click into my MacBook. So there we go, that's what we do with the metronome almost all of the time. This is really the most clear cut and standard way of using the metronome. The quarter note click, it gives us just the right balance between being a solid supporting friend, but not being too overwhelming, but actually stifles creativity and expression. But, but, but today we're going to be using the metronome as a precision tool to develop two very important skills. First of all, elasticity. Secondly, interpretation. Why? Because these are the skills that we're going to need to develop to be able to play along to backing tracks without a metronome. Now, I'm currently working on a video that explains how to improve your tempo skills when playing along to a backing track that doesn't actually feature a metronome. At the time of recording this video, it's not actually available yet, but maybe by the time that you watch this, maybe it will be. So go check it out. So elasticity, why? A quick check in the dictionary reveals this definition amongst others. The ability of an object or material to resume its normal shape after being stretched or compressed. Great! Well, what on earth does this have to do with drumming, you may ask? Well, let me explain. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set the metronome up so we can only hear the click on the one. So we just have less information to work with. We still have some information, but we simply have less. So basically we have the metronome on the one and for the rest of the bar, we're on our own. But what happens if we come back around to the one and we're not bang on with the click? Are we just going to brutally pull or push the time in one go and jump back on that one? Not really a good idea. And if we do that, we're very likely to lose the flow and probably won't end up back on the one the next time either. So like an elastic band, if you were to imagine me holding an elastic band here between my two hands and on that elastic band, there were marks every centimeter from beginning to end. Now, if I stretch that elastic band, the spaces in between those marks would get slightly bigger all the way through equally, maybe 11 millimeters. And then if I was to let go a little bit and compress the elastic band, the spaces in between those marks would change equally throughout, maybe now nine millimeters. Now in the same way, the spaces in between all the notes that you're playing, whether that be quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th notes, or any other note value, they all need to expand or contract equally if you need to adjust because you didn't come back down on the one at the right time. This elasticity needs to be very, very subtle and you need to make very, very minor adjustments until you get the impression that you're actually playing perfectly in tempo.
Of course, we're never really truly playing perfectly in tempo anyway. What we're actually doing in reality is making very, very small calculations and minor adjustments without even realizing it. And a lot of things in life actually work like this. Now, if you were to sit behind the wheel of a car on a perfectly straight road, even if you held the wheel perfectly straight and for some strange reason you decided to close your eyes, eventually, unfortunately for you, you'd come flying off the road. What is actually happening when your eyes are open is that without even realizing it, your brain is actually making small calculations and small adjustments to your trajectory, but to an observer, it looks like you're just driving down the road in a straight line. Playing along with a metronome in perfect time actually works in the same way. We're quite simply making very, very small adjustments all the time, so it actually appears as though we're playing perfectly in time. So this brings me to number two, interpretation. The dictionary definition that I found is the action of explaining the meaning of something. So once again, let me explain. Now, if you were to hear this, so what could that mean? Well, is it a very slow quarter note click? Is it a half note click on the one and the three? Or is it something else? Well, if I was to tell you that that is actually a click on the and of two and the and of four, well, suddenly we need to work out how to understand that and how we can use that information to actually develop a mental image of where the time actually is. So now you've interpreted that click to be able to deduce where the time actually is and now you can play along to it. Now this is a really great skill that you're going to need to develop if you're going to be playing along to backing tracks that don't actually feature a metronome. And in most cases, the metronomic element that you're using to feel the time isn't going to be something that's falling on the one, two, three, and the four. For example, so what does that mean? Well, if I was to tell you that that click is actually falling on the E of one, the and of two, the three, the A ah of three and the AND of four. Now you can use that and interpret that click to create a mental image of the one, two, three and the four throughout the bar and then play along to it. Okay guys, once again, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Please don't hesitate to leave any comments or questions in the comments section below. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. New videos coming out every Saturday and follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.